Before we get into evaluating types of data, let's look at what data actually is. Data is simply a set of facts that we gather in order to evaluate, analyze. It's the key ingredient of the scientific method because after we've conducted a hypothesis, then we need to analyze and interpret the data that we've generated from our testing. So when we're interested in psychological research, we've got some decisions to make in terms of the types of data that we're going to work with. One decision is whether we're gonna utilize primary or secondary data. So primary data is raw data. The experimenter has generated their own data from the testing methods that they've come up with. For instance, if a researcher wanted to investigate the success, relative success of bright light therapy for insomniacs, um, they could basically come up with some form of testing where they're gonna determine how long it will take the insomniacs to go to sleep each night and therefore over a one, two week stretch, we can get some before and after data or a comparison between um, groups of participants that are either using bright light therapy or CBT or some other type of treatment. Now, a key skill in VCE psychology is being asked to evaluate the method of data collection that has been chosen. And what that means is pointing out the pros and the cons. So the advantage of primary data compared to the alternative secondary data is the researcher has complete control over their sampling, their sample size, their sampling method, where they're getting the participants from. They have control over the investigation design chosen. They might opt for a within subjects design and they can basically anticipate potential extraneous variables and then act on them. Now the limitation is the time, the cost, the effort, but also sometimes in research, we might need to generate data that is sensitive, that might be bordering on unethical, e.g. if we're actually trying to get data about victims of crime or abuse or something like that. So therefore, in, in those situations, it might actually be more practical, more ethical to um, gather secondary data. So secondary data is gathered from an external source. And in this day and age, how easy is it to just to do a search on the web, past research on the effects of bright light therapy in treating insomnia? And what will happen is you'll come across some abstracts and if interested, you can read on, you might have to pay a fee, but we can look up past research done throughout the planet and then basically through a, a filtering process determine which of this is gonna be utilized. We do this all the time um, through our studies. So the, the advantage of this is, is it is time and cost effective and it's an efficient way to generate sensitive data, which I mentioned before. The limitation is that the investigator has, the researcher has no control. No control over the sample, no control over the era. There might be some extraneous slash confounding variables that the researcher might have noticed or observed. And so there's no way of rectifying that unless they replicate the experiment and then generate their own primary data. So if generating primary data, another choice is, are we going to generate subjective data or objective data? So objective data is observable, it's measurable, it could be qualitative, it could be quantitative, and the advantage of objective data compared to the alternative subjective data is it's less likely to be influenced by bias. It's easier to replicate, to verify by a third party, and thus we're generating more valid and reliable data. Okay, examples of this are things like physiological measures for stress. So if we wanna see how someone's responding to a stressful situation, an objective way would be measuring their heart rate, let's say on a Garmin, 
And so therefore we're not subjectively asking somebody how stressed they are. We're measuring some type of physiological response. The limitation is we don't get the richness of detail in terms of what's triggering that stress response. That's where subjective um, data comes into play. So subjective data is generated by um, an interview or similar. It, it's a personal opinion or a judgment. It could be qualitative or quantitative. So we could ask someone to rate from zero to five how stressed they are about going out, going to a party, going to um, work, going to school, etc. Or it could be simply asking somebody how they feel, and therefore they're giving a, an, we're giving them an open-ended question, and they're getting quite verbose with their response. So the advantage of that is we are getting the, the richness of detail. We're getting the person to unpack how they feel, how they think. But the limitation is, how do we analyze this? How, how do we draw conclusions? How do we generalize our results? How do we reproduce um, that type of methodology so that we're generating valid data? And then the third decision we need to make is, are we going to generate qualitative data or quantitative data? So qualitative data, are basically worded statements. So here's where we're getting a opinion from someone, uh, asking them how they feel about a certain topic. So again, the advantage of this is we're getting that richness of detail that I talked about earlier. But again, how do we analyze this? How do we summarize it? There's no statistics to work with. So therefore, despite the fact that we've got some interesting uh, insights and some pot um, potentially some anecdotal information, it's going to be hard to replicate this type of study and therefore be, a, be able to generate robust data. So it is good to generate anecdotal evidence, but in terms of the actual scientific evidence of it, that's when we might need to work with quantitative data. So quantitative data is some type of numerical expression or representation. So it could be a graph, could be a measure of central tendency, a mean, median or mode, a measure of variability like standard deviation, a bar graph, a percentage, etc. So the advantage of generating quantitative data, which could be uh, average heart rate in response to some type of stressor, mean time taken to go to sleep um, after exposure to bright light therapy, is we can basically summarize that information through a measure of central tendency. And then we can look at, um, I guess, statistical comparisons so we can determine significance of the data. And therefore we can report this in a way that the experiment can be replicated and so therefore we're generating data that is valid, that can be reproduced, that can be easily analyzed, that we can draw conclusions from and potentially generalizations.